Savior. And if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, get to know him today. He's a friend that sticks closer than any other. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are so glad you've joined us today. If you are watching over the airways, go on and hit your share button and share the broadcast with somebody today. We're here at 2015 Grove Street, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Our pastors are Mitchell and Deborah Dent. I'm Minister Washington, and we just want to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. We just invite you to join in with us and worship our creator of heaven and earth and all therein. He is worthy of all our praise. Amen. All right. If you need a ride to church, we have a transportation ministry. You can call 601 629-8658 and we'll pick you up and take you back home. Amen. Now we're going to continue worshiping in scripture with Deacon Coleman and after that prayer join us won't you? Amen. Merry Christmas everybody. If you would open your Bibles and stand up please. Book of Romans chapter 8. Book of Romans chapter 8. We're going to start at the 31st verse, Romans 8, 31. <laughs> Romans 8 started at the 31st verse. The word of God reads, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also make an intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sakes we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May Lord a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father who are in heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. O oh, Father, all praises are unto you. O oh, Father, we just thank you because, Father, you have done marvelous works. And, Father, we know that you are always at work around us. And, Father, we just thank you just so much this morning. Oh, it's just such a blessing. Oh, Father, it just thank you for just waking us up first. And, Father, thank you for just a marvelous and a wonderful Sunday school lesson this morning. Oh, Father, oh, we just here just to praise your holy name. Oh, Father, we praise you for the things we have seen. We praise you for the things we know that you have done in our lives. 
And Father, we also praise you for the things that are unseen and the things that we don't know. Because Father, we know that all things work for good for those who love you and are calling to your glory. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you this morning for just allowing us to come into your house of worship once again. Oh, Father, we're here is just to lift up your holy name. Oh, Father, in your word it said, mm, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. It says, serve the Lord God with gladness. Oh, Father, know that it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Oh, Father, we come. Oh, Father, it's just to lift you up. Oh, thank you for just another beautiful day in your house of worship. Oh, Father, we ask you, Father, if there's any malice in our heart, any sin in our heart, we ask you right now, Father, for forgiveness. Because we don't want to hinder not for one second the movement of your Holy Spirit in this place today. Oh, Father, we ask once again that we just lift up our pastor to you this morning. Oh, Father, we ask, Father, that you just give him peace. Oh, Father, we ask that you just continue to just give him joy. Oh, Father, just give him strength, Father, just to continue to run this race. And Father, we just thank you so much for the calling that you have put on his life and his family life. Oh, Father, we give you nothing but praise and arms. Oh, Father, we ask that you just continue to hold him just in the hollow of your arms. Oh, Father, and if there be any tears that fall from his face, we claim that you are white and collect each and every tears. Oh, Father, thank you for the blessing that he gives us each and every day. And thank you so much once again for his call. And Father, most so, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on our old rugged cross, Father. Oh, Father, we just said that, oh, Father, we just want to just lift him up this morning. Because he said that if he be lifted up, that he'll draw all men unto himself. And Father, we're going to lift him up, oh, Father, in our homes. We're going to lift him up in our workplaces. Oh, we're going to lift him up, Father, as we go true and for in the highways and the byways of this world. We're going to lift him up. And Father, because he said that he'll draw all men unto himself. And Father, we ask him for a blessing today on this service. Oh, Father, we pray, and Father, that your Holy Spirit just come in. Oh, Father, and set anyone who feeling captured free. Oh, we claim that all strongholds will be broken this morning. Oh, Father, that everyone will send up a true praise of glory to you today. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. And Father, we ask for a special blessing for every church door that opened up in your name. And claim it right now in your son Jesus' name. And I ask for these blessings. Amen.
brothers and sisters.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've learned some stuff. Amen. You know, I, I, you know, behind something like that, sometimes I want to come up and show you what I can do. But, but I'm going to stay in my lane. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to stay in my lane today. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants us to do, is really to learn how to trust him more and more. Amen. He, 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 there's, there's a, not only a wealthy place, but that place in him that he wants us to come, what he wants us to be. And glory to God, he wants to grow us to that point where when we speak something out of our mouths, we believe with by faith that those things are going to come to pass. Amen. And we start to decree things where sometimes folk may look at us like we're crazy. But glory to God, we're not going to worry about how they're looking at us because we know what's in us. Amen. And we know who's given us the option to speak out what we're speaking. Amen. And this morning, that's what we're going to be talking about. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Our provider. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And that, when, when you get that down off in your spirit, what you'll start to realize is that in Christ, hallelujah, in God, all things truly are possible. Amen. There's nothing uh, 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 hidden from God. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. And look, one of the things I, 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 I love God, amen, <clears throat> you and I got to understand is that Yes, there's God the Father, that's Christ the Son, and that's the, the, there's the Holy Spirit. But you also got to know these three are one. Amen, glory to God. And so when we get, get it so uh, in ground in our spirit, when we say the Holy Ghost, everybody knows we're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When we say Jesus, everybody knows we're talking about God the Father and the Holy Ghost and Jesus. Amen. And when we say God, Hallelujah. Everybody knows we're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And more importantly, they know we know who they are. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the more we speak out like that, we don't have to worry about things. Amen. When I need guidance, I can cry out for God and know that the Holy Spirit will guide me. Glory. When I need to create something, I can call on Jehovah and know that it's going to be created for me. Come on now. Or when I, when I need, I feel that I, I'm not as saved as I need to be saved, I can cry out for Jesus. Come on now. Because all three are one. Amen. We have to start to envision that in our spirit. Amen. So this morning, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, amen. And we just, I just pray that God uh, speaks to your heart and your mind. We thank God for those of you who are tuning in via Facebook and YouTube. Hit that share button. Let folks know that we own. And again, I, uh, let's give God a, a, a hand clap of praise again for the music this morning. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I don't know if y'all remember this because most of y'all are too young. Uh, but there was a the movie, don't be laughing, Derek, don't be laughing. There was a, 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 a TV show called The A-T. Had Mr. T. I pity the fool. Oh, Holler, help me, come back, God. But, but, but the, the, the leader of the A-T used to always say, I love it when a plan comes together. Hallelujah. God's plans are coming together, y'all. Right. Oh, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So I want you to go, let's go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew, the sixth chapter, we're going to look at verses 9 through 11 this morning. That's kind of the backdrop of scripture we're going to use this morning as we move into uh, the area where we're going to talk about Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Amen. And look what the word of God says. Uh, the disciples basically came and they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And you're going to see it on the screen there. But look, Matthew chapter uh, 6, verse 9 through 11. Amen. And if you don't mind, you can stand in honor of the reading of the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, in this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, how would be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in this house. We glorify you, God. We magnify you above 
everything else. God, as we stand in your pulpit this morning, not of me, oh God, but all of you. Holy Spirit, uh, think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. Lord God, we thank you, oh God, that you will say something that's going to change the hearts and minds of these, your people, that they will never be the same again. We decree by faith, miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow the preaching and teaching of your holy word. It is in Jesus' name that we do thank you and we do pray. Somebody shout amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So how many know that God is a promise keeper? Amen. Glory to God. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of a man that he has to repent. If God said he going to make it good. Amen. And see, every now and then, all you need to do is go in and find something in the word of God. And if that's a promise God made, you start standing on that promise. You start decreeing that promise out by faith. Glory to God. You're going to eventually say, I'm eventually. And eventually see that thing come to pass. And look, you've got to have enough faith, the glory to God, even if it ain't happened in your life or nobody's life in your family, but you found it in the word of God, go ahead and speak it out and stand on it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Keep, keep decreeing it out because God is going to do what he said he would do. Amen. And see, sometimes our faith has to grow up to the point of our speech. Ooh, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So you've got to start saying what God done said long before you ever see what God said. Amen. Are you, are you with me? Now, the children of Israel, uh, 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 he, Jesus said, teach them how to pray. He said, give, me this, give us this day our daily bread. How many know that God will daily provide you everything you need? Amen. Glory. He, he never would have told him to pray it if he wasn't going to do it. Amen. And if we go back to the book of Exodus, we find in the book of Exodus when they were complaining about stuff, God gave them manna from heaven. Amen. Are uh, you actually when you read it, not only did he give them bread, but he gave them meat. Amen. The Bible says quail came from the sea. Come on now. Oh, chicken of the sea. Bless the Lord. That quail came in. And, and, and look, the, the, the Bible says when you read that story that they, they, they flew about waist high. They didn't have to jump up. They can just knock them. Oh, come on now. Glory. God was making sure that they had meat to eat. But then he gave them this manna from heaven. Amen. That's what the children of Israel called it. They called it manna. The Bible says it tasted like wafers made with honey. So it wasn't no bad taste and stuff. Come on now. Ooh, my, my, my wife and I, I believe it's like our first, second, third anniversary. Glory to God. That's a long time ago. Bless the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. But we went to a place called Steak and Ale. And they had this brown bread, and then they had this butter that like had honey in it. Look, you get full off the bread and the butter. Oh, come on, church. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you to see that God knows how to provide for you. And when God provides for you, he don't provide secondhand stuff. Y'all better help me right there. God provides you with the best thing available. Amen. Oh, huh? especially when you show God you appreciate it. Oh, hallelujah. See, that's why, look, look, hallelujah. Ain't you happy that you found the wife? Oh, yeah. And then you found a good thing? Oh, yeah, sir. And the favor, oh, see, see, I like somebody that starts to testify to the goodness of the Lord, amen? Look, look, she, she cried right now, but inside, oh, she dancing. I know it, I know it. I, <laughs> Glory to God. She, look, 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 they just oh, suave and sophisticated, oh, but inside, they happy, ain't they? Oh, holly. because in the reverse, they said, God, I thank you that you sent me a husband. I thank you that you sent me a man. Are y'all still with me? Glory to God. Okay, 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 okay. So God, tell your neighbor, God will provide for you. Say it again. God will provide for you. Oh, one more time. God will provide for you. Glory to God. Uh, and again, he provides. And, 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 you, know, you know, sometimes we get crazy. You know, you know, now uh, scriptures here in Exodus 14, verse 31 tells us that the wafers taste, uh, the bread tastes uh, or the manna tastes like wafer and honey. Now you get on over in there and they, tell me, they start talking about this old, this old manna. And, and, you know, sometimes we can get so, we can get so, uh, I don't know the word I want to use. Huh? So caught up, so, uh, so, so crazy. That's probably the best word. Uh, that, that we don't appreciate how good it is of the things that God has given us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, when, you first, when they first got it, oh, they was happy. But now, because they done had it for a while, now they're taking it for granted. That's what we're taking it for granted. But see, you, you and I should never get to the point where we take the blessings of the Lord for granted. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We want to always show God that we are highly, greatly appreciative to everything. Now, look, even the smallest thing. Amen? 
Oh, how old folks say you don't miss your water till your well run dry. Come on now. Oh, see, look, I used to tell folks when they come into counseling and they complain about the husband, or they complain about the wife, I, I, I say, uh, I, I'm going to leave her, I'm going to leave him. I say, you know what's going to mess you up? You know what's going to mess you up? When you drive by the house you used to walk out of. Uh-huh. And, and, and the grass all cut and uh, 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 what you took for granted uh -huh. hallelujah somebody now is taking stock in it and making it look good are y'all still with me glory to God so we got to learn how to be grateful and look the Bible tells us that God kept them for the 40 years they were in the wilderness oh holly feeding them 40 years and look when they came out the Bible says he brought them out by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night Come on now. He gave them something to keep them cool in the daytime and something to keep them warm in the evening time. Amen. And the Bible even says they closed and wear out. Folk died, but the clothes still stayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. And God says, I have that kind of ability when you look at me as your provider. Amen. Or when you stop looking at folk and you stop looking at stuff and you start looking at God, God will make a way out of no way, won't he? Oh, hallelujah. See, any, has he ever made a way out of no way for anybody up in here? Oh, hallelujah. And see, can I, can I, I don't want you to forget that because what you have to start telling yourself is when, you, when, when stuff starts to go wrong, you got to put yourself in remembrance of what God has done. You got to remind yourself of how good God has been to you. Amen? Glory to God. So, so, so it, it, look, how many know that even when you weren't thinking about God, God was thinking about you? Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. So he, he's able to keep you, amen? Hallelujah. No matter what's going on. Tell your neighbor, I got a covenant with God. Oh, tell me, I got a covenant with God. And see, the more you start to decree that, and then you start, you'll start to walk in the, that covenant, amen? You'll start to keep your part of the covenant. I'm going to say that one more time. The more you say it, I, I got a covenant with God. God will start to show you what your part is in the covenant, and he'll give you the power to keep your part in the covenant. Right. Hallelujah. Because every now and then, you, he won't have to remind you. You'll remind yourself how good he was due to you when you weren't even thinking about him. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Tell you neighbor that God is a good God. Right. Now. God told them to, to collect this, man. I, I'm just trying to get to where I want to go. He told them collect just enough for the day. Just, just enough. See, oftentimes, we want to store stuff up. Amen. Ain't, 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 ain't nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you just got to obey God. You got, just got to obey God. Amen. See, don't try to store it up as if, as if God ain't got no more. Hallelujah. I was, you know, a couple weeks ago, I, I, I had this real bad sinus thing, and I had this cough that was attached to it. Amen. And so, uh, uh, you know how we are. Uh, uh, when I say we, I'm talking about folks that look like me, bless the Lord. We know how we are. We share, we share medicine. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. We share medicine. Amen. You come in and you talking about, I got this cough, da, 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 da. I had that last week, and I got these pills. And, 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 and come on, let's talk. We, 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 share, we share medicine. And, 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 and as if we can't go get some medicine for ourselves. I had this cough and Daryl gave me some pills and, and I, I had them in a napkin and, 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 and I messed around and threw them away. And, 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 and uh, I called them and said, uh, uh, man, check the, check, 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 check the restroom over there. Uh, 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 look, at, look at the trash can, you know. I bleed them pills in there. He called me back and said, yeah, there they are. I said, save them for me. I'm just going to tell you about me. Amen. Because we share. But whoa, whoa. as quick as we'll share Madison, as quick as we'll, we, we, we won't share God like that. Amen. You got to start sharing God with folk. Amen. You got to start sharing Christ. You got to start sharing the goodness of God. Amen. Glory to God. Jehovah who saved you, he's able to save other folk. Amen. Glory to God. And you got to, you, you see, a lot of times folk won't know what God is able to do until you give your testimony about what he done, done for you. Right. Hallelujah. I, I don't know about you, but he done done for me. He done, he done, uh, oh, uh, uh, if I start talking about this, I got to talk about that. Hallelujah. Oh, he kept me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, 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 when everybody else seen that they left me, he kept me. Amen. And then he showed me that folk hadn't left me. You know, it's funny how the enemy will try to make you think stuff. 
And you got to start telling yourself, no, 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 no. Look, look, I remember Bill Wilson said one time, but he was preaching, boy, he was preaching hard. And he was talking about the goodness of God. And he was decreeing some things. And somebody got up and walked out the back. And the devil said, you see there? They done left you. And he, he said, you know what he told the devil in his mind while he was preaching? He said, no, they just gone out. Maybe they got to go out and smoke a cigarette, but they're going to be back. Hallelujah. Said a few minutes later, they came back in. See, the devil will try to get you to think all kinds of crazy stuff because he's trying to take you out of the mindset of knowing that God is able to do anything but fail. Hallelujah. And when you start looking at Jehovah like that, being that kind of God in your life, glory to God, you'll start giving God stuff that you used to be holding on to. Uh -huh. you, you were thinking that you were the only one able to do something with it, and you know you couldn't do nothing with it. The enemy just made you think you can do something with it. But when you let, oh, what well, well, my God said, let go and let God, give it to God. Ain't that what you said? When, when you go ahead and give some stuff over to God, God know how to do what God can do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. See, if he kept them children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness, he'll keep, he'll keep you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, said all that to try to get to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. In Genesis chapter 22, we find Abraham. Abraham, we call him the father of faith. Amen. And, and, and uh, 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 Galatians, Paul said, he's the father of us all because we believe. Amen. And in Genesis chapter 22, now you got to understand a little background. Abraham was 100 years old when he finally got Isaac. Amen. Isaac was a promised seed. He had to wait about 25 years to be fully persuaded that what God promised him, he was able to do it without his help. Oh, y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. You know, he had come up with all kinds of plans and had a, had, had, had a son by the name of Ishmael. But and, and it's funny that when Ishmael and his mama ran off, Abraham had to go get them and bring them back. And then God turned right around after he done brought them back, said, now you got to put them out. Hey, hallelujah. Every now and then you got to understand, glory to God, God you got to do stuff the way God says to do it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And, 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 and see, she ran, they ran away, but now he has to send them away. See, that's some stuff you got to send away. If you're going to walk in God's greatness, if you're going to walk in the power and the authority of God, that's some stuff you got to be willing to send away. Some stuff you got to be willing to let go. And when you do, God can now move like he wants to move in your life. Amen. And so here he is. He done got him. Now the boy about uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And he said, now the son that you got, your only son, I need you to offer him up to me as an offering. I need you to give I need you to kill him. I said, I need you to kill him. So Abraham gets, his, gets the boy and they, they walking up the mountain. He tells the people, me and the lad going yonder to worship and we coming back. In other words, Abraham starts to speak out, hallelujah, what he wants to take place. See, a lot of times, don't, don't, you, see, you should be sitting there waiting and wishing for God to do something. You need to be saying what you would like God to do. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, amen. And the Bible says faith come by hearing, amen. So sometimes, you, you, is it in the word? First thing, you get, if you find it in the word, then that's word. Hallelujah. I said, when you find it in the word, that's word. God is able to do, God's going to do what's in the word. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, angels who watch over us in all of our ways, they do the word of God. So you can't assign an angel to something that ain't in the word. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But you can assign an angel to stuff that's in the word. That's why the Bible said, if the thief be found, oh, glory to God, he got to repay. You ain't got to go get it. The angel's going to go get it. Amen. And bring it back up to the, to the spoiling of his whole house. So here Abraham is. He, and this is the mindset that Abraham is in. Because he's been fully convinced, he's been fully persuaded that what God promised, he's able to perform. And so now the, the fact that he believed it, he said, sacrifice your only, begot, only son. He, 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 he got the boy, he going on up the mountain. Let's look, let's look at, uh, uh, look, let's, let's see, see what's it. Uh, he said, he said, he said. And Abraham said, my son, God, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They got to the point where the boy said, uh, uh, where the lamb at? I, 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 I got the fire. You don't put the wood on my back. But, 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 but we're missing a crucial element of this sacrifice. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You know, because boy, he want to know. Amen. But, but tell your neighbor, he, he wasn't worried. He was not worried. Amen. Look, look what he said. He said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And the two of them went together. Amen. So glory to, they're going on up. Oh, look, look, I, 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 
I'm going to say they going up in joy. They going up in peace. Amen. You know, it could have been a worry, but because the father said God's going to supply, I believe Isaac got enough confidence uh, from his daddy that he wasn't worried about nothing that was going to go down. See, a lot of times we worried about what's going to be the next move, but if you got confidence in your father, if you got confidence in your daddy, glory to God, and he done said it's going to be all right, what, you gonna say? What, what do you say? It's already all right, amen? Oh, hallelujah. Watch what he said. And they came to the place in which God had told them, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took a knife to slay his son. Abraham is being obedient to what God had called him to do, but in his, tell you that, in his heart, he's just believing that God going to do something. Amen. See, 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 glory to God. You've got to be willing to, uh, you can't wait for God to move before you do. Amen. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. You can't wait for God to move before you do. Amen. You know, God has already told you, go ye therefore. Come on now. God has already give, given you your command, so you've got to be moving out in light of what God has already said, and then you got to have an expectation, ex expectation that what God said he's going to perform. He's going to back it up. Amen. Louis said, he said, but the angel called, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Isn't it good that God will call your name twice? Hallelujah. Anytime he call your name twice, Dion, Dion, glory to God. Anytime he call your name twice, glory to God, you got to pay attention. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, come on now. Hallelujah. You, you got to pay attention, amen. In other words, uh, he getting ready to say something to you that you need to hear. Amen. He said, he said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay a hand on the lad or do anything to him. For, I, for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Glory to God. In other words, because Abraham is performing what God had asked him to do, Hallelujah. It showed that his faith wasn't in stuff, but his faith is in God. He's trusting God that God is able to do what God said he would do. Come on now, Louis. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horn. How many know that God all, look, look, now. now. Anybody ever seen an animal caught in a trap? Nine times out of ten, they ain't very quiet, are they? They, they making some noise trying to get loose, ain't, amen? And so you got to know that there was some stuff going on, but, but, but for whatever reason, Abraham and Isaac didn't hear it and didn't see it. It's right there in plain sight, but they can't see it. See, every now and then, you gotta, that there's some stuff that God got hid for you, but it's in plain sight. And it's your obedience that will cause the revelation or it to be revealed to you that it was, all the, uh, it was there all the time. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. But he looked up, and there the ram was caught. And Abraham took the, and Abraham took the ram, and he offered up uh, for, the off, for the burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place of the Lord will provide a Jehovah Jireh. I, I spelled that wrong, but don't hold that against me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Supposed to be an aura in there. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Anyway, anyway, he calls that place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. And you got to start seeing God as the ultimate provider of everything that you need. Amen. Irregardless of what you're going through, you got to believe that God is able to provide. Look what he said in verse 10, verse 15. And then the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time out of heaven. Look what he said. Hallelujah. And he said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessings, I will bless you and multiplying, I will multiply you. Oh, glory to God. Uh, why somebody just receive it that by faith that God's getting ready to multiply you? Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. Glory to God. Boy, I, 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 I. Y'all pardon me for a minute now. Y'all pardon me for a minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a little ugly for a minute. Hallelujah. You know, uh, if, if God has been good to you, and God's telling you this morning, by the word of the Lord, I want to multiply you. And you know you need some, you, you know, addition is good. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Addition is good. But you're in a position where you need some multiplication to take place in your life. 
Can you stand up and praise God for the multiplication that he's getting ready to do in your life? Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come on. See, a lot of times we wonder why God ain't doing something. Could it be because you and I ain't doing what we need to do? Oh, huh? see, sometimes you, oh, oh, sometimes you got to cry out by faith. I don't feel nothing. I don't see nothing. I ain't got no shiver going up my spine, but it's in the word of the Lord. And since it's in the word of the Lord, that's what I'm going to shout about. Oh, you, oh, yeah, 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 come on now. Woo! Glory to God. You got to know how good God done been to you. Well, pastor, this going wrong, that going wrong. I, I do not care. God said, if you start to praise me, huh, oh, I'll inhabit your praise. I turn whatever negative thing, I turn it around in your favor. See, you got to actually see him as Jehovah Jireh. Come, 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 come. Jehovah means God, but it also means creator. Hallelujah. So the creator God is the one who's able to provide what you need. Because if you ain't got it, he can create it. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, it's already been created. You just can't see it. It's like the ram caught in the bush. But the more you start decreeing, glory to God, uh, uh, in over your life, you're going to start to see it manifest in your life. Hallelujah. But see, 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 every now and then, you got to shake yourself. Hallelujah. Uh, and believe God for what God said he's going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here, Abraham. He, he, he said, I'm going to move, I'm going to, and your descendants as the stars in heaven and as the sands by the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemy. Can I just tell you something? See, when Jesus told Peter, hallelujah, when Peter got revelation knowledge and spoke the revelation knowledge about Christ, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, he said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound. In heaven, whatever you lose on earth is losing in heaven. And he said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. You shall possess the gates of your enemy. So anything the enemy has been trying to take from you, you can take it back. Oh, hallelujah. Because the power of God is with you to do it. Amen. You're not going out there by yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give me the next one real quickly. Go to Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, see, Jesus said, I'm that manna that came down out of, out of heaven. You're going back. He said, uh, uh, give us this day our daily bread. So God, God has already provided everything you and I need through Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got that bread. Amen. And see, so you got the book. Hallelujah. So you can go and get a slice anytime you need it. Ooh, y'all missed that. Y'all got missed that. And, and look, it's, it's forever fresh. Y'all, come on, I need some help up in here. Glory. You, you, you can open up the Bible any day of the week, read any page, uh, any time, and it's fresh bread. It ain't stale, ain't got no mold or mildew on it, ain't trying to grow no penicillin. Come on now, glory be to God. It's fresh bread. Hallelujah. And if you keep looking, glory to God, that's some oil in there too. Hallelujah. And if you keep looking, uh, I don't know if I need to say this, man, but if you keep looking, there's some wine in there, too. Yeah. Oh, somebody got loud on the wine. Help me, Lord. But I can't get mad at you because it's in the book. And, the, and God said, I need you to be drunk off this new wine anyway. So if you're going to get drunk, why not get drunk off of the wine of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Bless me. Come on. Okay, okay, go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he gave them, he's given us this. And all you and I got to do is receive it by faith. Tell you, maybe you got to receive it by faith. Amen. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. One, there are three things I need to get to uh, and talk to you about. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, before I go there, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. In John, the first chapter, he tells us, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God, so, you know, so, so everything is made by him. 
And when you see Jehovah Jireh as your provider, everything you need, he's able to provide. Amen. David had to see him as shepherd. Look at Psalms. Y'all know that? Psalms 123 and 1. Look what it said. The Lord is what? My shepherd. I what? Shall not want. Amen. Glory to God. So God knows how to take care of your wants. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, don't know, he just not know how to take care. He done took care. I know that may be not be the best injury in English, but it's, tell your neighbor it's already done. It's already done. And see, sometimes we, we got to get this. It's already done mentality. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. And see, 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 look, look. When, when you start to look at it as it's already done, you ought to start acting like it's already done. Or when you start acting like, see, the de- that, that's the thing. The devil don't want you to act like you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to keep acting like you broke, busted, and disgusted, trying to get saved. You already know. Come on now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And look, look, let's keep going. Look, look what he says. Look what he says. He keeps saying. Uh, 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 he's going to supply every need. Philippians 4, 19. Paul says, and my God shall supply all your need according to what? His riches and glory. How? By Christ Jesus. So tell your neighbor, it's already done. It's already done. Jehovah has already provided. Amen. And look, watch God. Watch God. Not only that, but God will handle your desire. Look what it says in Psalms 37 and 4. Delight thyself in the Lord and he will what? Give you the desires of your heart. Anybody got any desires this morning? Oh, no, no, no. Let me ask you a question. How do you show God that you are delighted in him? Ha, oh, I'm in there now. How do you show God, God, I am delighted with what you're doing in my life? You got to praise God. Huh? Come on now. Oh, come on now. Got to spend time with him. Brother said you got to acknowledge him in all of your ways. Okay, okay, okay. Help me, Holy Ghost. A lot of times folks say, when, when, when the piano playing really playing that song and, and, and the drummer really beat that drum and, 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 and you, oh, I put it this way I, I mean, see, see y'all I got lost sir. can I take you back to the club some of y'all used to go to the club okay you know how it was when your song came on oh some people don't want to look at me now you know how it was when your song came on in the club Joe, Joe come on you know, try to look at the ceiling huh? you know how it was when your song came on. Look, what did you do when your song came on in the club? Oh, look, you didn't even have to have no dance partner. So, hey, come on. You, you. And, and folk be waiting for the Holy Spirit to do something. But you've got to decide, hallelujah, that God had already did it. So that's a scripture said, I'm going to praise him in advance. Amen. Oh, come on now. I'm going to give him glory uh-huh. in advance. It ain't happened yet, but I'm going to praise him like it already done happen. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I'm not going to let my current situation stifle my praise. Thank you, God. I say that. When you start feeling that God done forgot you and you sit down on your praise, the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And, 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 and uh, 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 what's the other one? Stubbornness is as unto idolatry. See, sometimes we, 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 we know what God said we're supposed to do. But for whatever reason, we allow how we feel to dictate what we do. Mm, God help me right there. And so when you offer up a sacrifice of praise, you set aside your feeling and you glorify God anyhow. So excuse me while I, hallelujah, glory to my God, amen. Oh, oh, through my sister's death, he's kept me, never left me. Allowed me to see how good he had been to her. 
what he was doing with her when nobody else saw. She was like the unknown, but she became known because of what God allowed her to do. Oh, glory to God. You got to learn how to praise God anyhow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and I, oh, I'm going to go here. Glory to God. Every now and then, you got to praise God for somebody who won't praise God. You got to praise God for folk. They know they need to praise, but they won't praise. But don't let their not praising keep you from praising. Keep you from worshiping. Yes. Keep him, see, 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 glory. And, and, see, that's why the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of fellow believers. Glory to God. Because sometimes somebody seeing you praise yes. will break that thing on them that's keeping them from praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Because tell the truth. <laughs> I tell y'all this. We, we had a, my, my sister's birthday was the 14th. She would have been 72 years old. So instead of having a wake, we had a birthday party. And so we're sitting there at the table eating chicken and meatballs and devil eggs and you know, hallelujah. And the DJ is playing a song. And it must have been somebody that's close to me song, <laughs> hallelujah. And so when the song came on, we sitting there talking and all of a sudden this person close to me disappeared. And when we looked up, this person was up there And we just fell out because they didn't tell us nothing. They didn't say bye, yeah. I'm getting ready to go dance. But when that music went to play it, they just went on up there and began to dance. But can, can, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. One of the things that started to happen is that my grandchildren, who, 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 who don't get a chance to go places, hallelujah, <laughs> talk back to me, hallelujah, got up there with them and they started to teach them how to dance decently. Y'all better help me. You see, see, because children going to learn how to dance. Hallelujah. And it's best somebody teach them how to dance decently. Y'all better help me. Then, come on now. Then for YouTube and TikTok to teach them. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? See, see, see. Your faith, hallelujah, is transferable when you transfer it. When you demonstrate it to other people, amen? Glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. And so God knows how to grant your desires. Y'all still with me? I ain't lost nobody, huh? Okay, so here, three points, here, three points, three points, three points. The first thing is, we must speak out our faith. Find somebody say, you gotta speak out your faith. You gotta, you gotta, see, what you believe, you gotta speak it out. Folk for, for gotta know what you believe, amen? Folk can't always read your mind. Come on now. You got to start speaking. And what Abraham started doing going up the mountain, he started to speak out. When you and Y'all stay here with the donkeys. Me and the lad going yonder to worship, and we coming back. He's speaking out his faith. He's decreeing what he wants. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So you, sometimes you got to remind yourself of how good God been to you. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. How many, again, how many know that God been good to you? Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that God is being good to you? Glory to God. So, and look, every now and then, how many know that every now and then the enemy will send you a negative thought? Uh huh, uh huh. But see, you got to learn how to pull that thought down, cast that side uh, uh, aside, uh huh, and you got to replace that thought with something positive. Hallelujah. Amen. See, uh, uh, don't become, uh, let me put it this way don't be too much of a devil's advocate that you're talking and acting like the devil. Did you hear what I just said? Hallelujah. But be an advocate for the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So you, you got to speak out your faith. Amen. You got to speak it out. Here's the second thing. You must speak out your faith before me. Uh -huh. See, a lot of folk like to uh, uh, maybe get behind closed doors and say, God do this and God do that. Because they don't want nobody to laugh at them when they start talking about something that's bigger than their bank book. Oh, y'all better, come on now. Uh -huh, uh, uh, when, when, when they start speaking those things that seem impossible. Oh, watch this. Speaking those things that, 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 that in somebody's mind is contrary to your ability to do it. You see, it ain't got nothing to do with me. But it got everything to do with the God that I serve, amen? 
See, to grow it up. See, we never would have walked into this building if, if it was based on what I could do. Oh, hallelujah. And we never would have paid it off ahead of time if it was based on what I could do. Uh, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But this is all God. Tell you them it's all God. And if God could do this, do this what makes you think God can't do something bigger? Oh, come on now. You know, I, I remember one time it made me mad. And see, sometimes you got to get mad. It made me mad because we were looking at a, a building that was twice this size. Twice this size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and somebody found out we were looking at it and they made the statement, uh, uh, they trying to get that building and they ain't got but 10 members. Made me mad. And I probably said some stuff I probably shouldn't say. Oh, y'all know what I'm saying? See, you can cancel out God's plan with your mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But when you start trusting God, and irregardless of what somebody else say, if God done told you something, don't you back up off of it. Because if you back up off of it, God, what can God do if you done backed up off of it? Thank you. That's why, that's why the scripture says, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I don't care how bad that joker, joker be acting. Come on now, y'all ain't, ain't talking to me. I, I don't care how bad the situation may be looking, but you got to keep standing on the word. God, you say it. God, you say it. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. God, you say it. The sincere, fervent prayer of the righteous availing much. God, you say it. Amen. God said, put me in remembrance of what I said. See, when you start doing that, glory to God, Jehovah going to do what Jehovah said he would do. You be, and, and see, this is what you got to believe. Y'all with me? Ooh, I'm trying to finish, y'all. I'm trying to finish. I'm trying to finish. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ain't nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you got to believe what you say. And that's the third one. You got to believe, you, you must believe what you say. Amen. Not only do you have to say it, not only do you have to say it before folk, but you got to believe what you say. Amen. In other words, you can't just be calling words. Amen. Those words have to be engrafted in your heart. They have to be in your spirit. Amen. And see, a, a lot of times, you know, when, when you start examining your speech, when you start examining your speech, you'll find that, that you, you, you don't often always, oh, excuse me, you don't always say what God said. You kind of dumb it down. So it lines up with how you feel instead of just speaking what God said. But the centurion told Jesus, speak the word only. You ain't got to dumb it down for my sake and definitely don't dumb it down for your sake. Just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Amen. Glory to God. So you got to start speaking this word out. And you got to believe what you say. Go to uh, Mark chapter 11. It, it, this is not going to be on the screen. But in Mark chapter 11, when Jesus and them came back from the fig tree, uh, they he had spoke to the fig tree and the disciples heard it. Y'all know that? They went on down to the room. Now they come back. Peter recognizes the tree. Look what he says. Uh, uh, Mark chapter 11, starting at verse 22. And Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. Peter said, that's the fig tree. It's dried up by the root. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Look what he goes on to say. For verily I say unto you that whoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed uh, and, does, uh, and cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Amen. So not only can, do you have to say this, not only do you have to say it before men, but you got to believe what you say. Amen. It's got to be in your spirit. Hallelujah. Look, can I just tell you something? When something is in your spirit, hallelujah, and you start to speak it out, God knows it's coming from your heart. God, look, uh, David, hallelujah. David went to the, I'm sorry, Solomon, David's son. He went to the Lord after being made king, and, and, and David said, uh, uh, Solomon said, God, these are a whole bunch of heap, these are a whole bunch of folk. I'm trying to get it right now. These are a whole bunch of folk that you got me to lead. 
I don't have the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to lead. But if you give me the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to lead your people, I'll be able to do it. God said, Solomon, because this was in your heart, not only am I going to give you what you asked for, but you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. You didn't ask for wealth. You didn't ask for riches. You, I'm going to give you what, what you asked for and all the stuff I named that you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you that too. But it was because it was in his heart. You see, when you start to speak out by faith and it's in your heart, God knows it. Folk be saying, God knows my heart. But can I tell you, God really does. Jeremiah tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things who can know it. God does. Amen. And so God is wanting us to get to the point where we're starting to speak things out by faith or what we say we believe in with our whole heart, with our whole soul, with our whole mind. And we're not going to worry. Just like Abraham was fully persuaded. God wants to fully persuade us that he's able to do exactly what he said. Amen. If you go to the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, 17 through 19, what you'll find there is what God says. Uh, uh, or oh God is talking about the hall of faith and he talks about Abraham, how Abraham had said that, you know, uh, Isaac, uh, 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 Isaac is the promised seed and Isaac don't have no children. And if he going to be if he's going to be the promised seed, God must going to be able to raise him up from the dead in order for him to be the promise seed that he is. So I ain't gonna, I don't have any worries about sacrificing Isaac because God has said he's going to be the promised seed. So whatever God got to do for him to be the promised seed, I'm going to trust God. Amen. Now, in, watch this now. Stay with me now. Stay with me. Now. I'm, I'm trying to quote. In, in Psalms chapter 19, verse uh, 13, it says, keep, me, keep your ser servant from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be blameless and shall uh, be innocent of uh, great transgressions. You see, a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, we can presume or assume something. But the scripture says presumptuous sin. Stay with me now. There is a thing I'm going to call presumptuous faith. You've got to know God for yourself. And when you know what God has done periodically over time in your life, then it's not presumptuous for you to believe that God is able to do what he said he's going to do. Are y'all with me? Go, go to God. So, so Abraham had enough faith in what God had done to believe that God was going to do this great thing in his life. Do you have that kind of faith this morning? Do you have that kind of faith in Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, who's able to do anything but fail? You get, and see, if you do, then you got to start speaking that out by faith. And I don't care how difficult it might seem in the natural. You got to believe God in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, some of you never thought you would have what you have right now. Amen. But as God kept dealing with you, God brought you to the point where, look, you ain't got half of what you don't start talking to God about. Oh, y'all better talk back to me. Amen. Hallelujah. See, see, because, and, and, and you're not assuming anything because you know to whom much is given. Come on, church. Much is required. But see, you ain't, you're not afraid of putting in what you got to put in. You're not afraid of sowing what you got to sow. Amen. You're not afraid of doing what you got to do to get what you believe God says he has for you. Amen. So when you start looking at Jehovah Jireh, he is my provider. Amen. Hallelujah. When I first looked at big leg Deborah Fairley, <laughs> hallelujah. Man, I like, she way out of my league. She way out of my league. When I, when I looked at some of the guys that were cut, uh, trying to talk to her, you know, they 6'2 and all that kind of stuff. And here I am, 5'8 and a half. Give me my half inch, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when I came to her, boys, like I was six feet, two inches. Hallelujah. And full of muscle. And I remember one night uh, I went to see her. I was working at uh, Captain John's restaurant. See, God will give you what you need to get what you need. Hallelujah. I, I had learned that she loved seafood. 
So I, every time I went to see her, I was bearing gifts of seafood. See, I wasn't no fool. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Hallelujah. That was for me. <laughs> and, 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 uh, uh, but I, w- I would be, you know, smelling like the restaurant. Be smelling like the restaurant. And I said, well, I said, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I don't smell that good. <laughs> but this is what she said. I'm not worried about how you smell. <laughs> Give me the food. <laughs> no, no, no. She ain't said nothing about the food. But God is saying, look, you can come to me just as you are. Hallelujah. I've got everything you need. But you've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. You got to believe it. So God is talking to somebody today. He said, I want to be your Jehovah Jireh. I want to be your provider. I want to be all that you've asked me to be. You need that. You need that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as Pastor Deborah comes, I want you to stand. I want you to stand as she's ministering. Glory to God. And she's ministering this word. Because I think it's a way of us reverencing God and letting him know, God, I'm I'm trusting you for something. I I want you to know that I see you as my Jehovah Jireh. I see you as my provider. And and, 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 and I'm not worried about being inconvenienced in any kind of way to show you how much I care about you. Amen. Amen. As we started the service off this morning, the the very first scripture that we started off with was, it was talking about the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. He says, give us, we say, give us this day our daily bread. That means that he's going to provide everything that we need daily. Amen. And we just have to have faith. And we got to walk by faith and not by sight. Because a lot of times we don't see it. But if we just hold on and we have that faith, then we know that he's there. And he says he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. But the key here before you can walk by faith, before you can just have that assurance that I can pray and the Holy Spirit is there and direct, and he's there to direct me in everything that I need to be directed in. He's there to minister to me. He's there to warn me about things that are to come and to tell me to go this way or that way because there's dangers up above. But before I can have that full confidence, I need to have the key to the kingdom. Amen. And the key to the kingdom is Jesus Christ. I need to have him as my Lord and my Savior. And I didn't just say as my Lord, and and I didn't say just as my Savior. I need him both. I need him to save me, but I need him to direct me and to be over my life. So at this point, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, if you, if you don't have confidence that if he was to come back today, that you would spend eternity with him, if you don't have confidence today that the Holy Spirit is leading and directing you, if you don't have confidence, confidence today that all I have to do is operate in faith, I just have to abide in the word. And whatever I ask for, if I, if I abide in the word, if you don't have that confidence today, we invite you to welcome him into your life. You see, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to knock you down and run you over. He walks up to your heart and he knocks. 
And he says, I'm standing at the door knocking. And he's waiting for you to open up that door. So you open up that door. And if you do and say, come in, then he will come in. It's so simple. And a lot of times the world makes it hard. And the reason why the world makes it hard, because Satan wants you to think it's hard for you to be with him. Amen. So right now, for those that are listening to my voice online and for those in the room that may not really know, I ask that we that do know join in with them as we say this prayer. And that as you're saying the prayer, you already know them, start praying for somebody else. That God's going to touch their heart. Give them that. Put that right person. Let them hear. Let them want to do it. Because we got to intercede on their behalf. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. But right now, Father, I ask for forgiveness. And Lord, I ask that you come into my heart and forgive me for all of my sins. And then, Lord, I ask that you come into my life and forgive me. And I believe by faith that you have forgiven me and that you now reside in me. And I thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. And if you touch and agree with that prayer, we say hallelujah right now. And please contact us. Give us a call. We're at Mount Common Ministries, 601-638-9015. Amen. Give us a call, and we'll continue to pray with you. And if you did say that prayer, then we ask that you go and find a church home. Find a church, someplace. Find a church to be able to fellowship with one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now, as we go on, there was, there's two more things that you can, if you just kind of got caught up, you're a prodigal son, prodigal daughter, prodigal child, and you need to come back. Just remember, he's there. And all you got to do is come back. All you got to do is say, I'm sorry. And he'll let you come back in. Amen. It's just that simple. You don't have to come to the, before the church and say, and then do 10 jumps and five flips or whatever. All you have to do, and you, don't, you just have to say to him. It is to him. Now, the word does tell us to forgive those who have trespassed against us if we want to get forgiveness. So we got to keep that in mind. If we want him to forgive us, then we have to forgive anybody, anybody, everybody. You can't hold on to it. I don't care what your justification is. You got to be like him, right? We don't want him to be like us and put some ifs on it, right? Praise God. And then last but not least, if you have, if you have, you don't have a church home, the doors of our church are open and we invite you to come become a part of our membership. And now that we finish that, we would like to have special prayer. If anybody needs a special prayer, please come forward and we'll do special prayer. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. And we just, Lord, we just ask that you will move on behalf of those that need you right now. There are a lot of people that are going through situations. And we, Lord, are touching and agreeing. We, the body of Christ, are touching and agreeing. And we're praying that you will move in those situations. We bind the enemy and all of his plots. He has no authority and we speak to them right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just pray that you will heal those that need a healing. We stand on your word, by his stripes we were healed. 
And we're just praying right now for the manifestation of those healings in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just thank you right now for those that may be going through all kinds of maybe financial situations. We know, Lord, that you will move and you will open up doors and you will bless. As we go through and we're trying to make decisions, we pray right now that we will stop and listen to what you tell us to do so that we will make the right decisions. We will make the right choices. We will say what you want us to say. We love you and we honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us all say amen, amen, and amen. And we believe it right now that God has given you all the desires of your heart. And so now we're going to turn it over to our music ministry. than an offering time. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's all part of worship. It's all part of worship. You know, um, Jesus Christ and you know, um, a, lot of, a lot of Christ's miracles, he performed them with, you know, materials that he, he, that, that he got from us or from people. And in this particular miracle, though, you know, Jesus could have easily just took some stones if he wanted to, and, and he could have created what he needed to create because, we you know, he had, just, he had just gone across the Sea of Galilee, and, and a lot of people had followed him, and a lot of hungry people. <laughs> and uh, in this particular situation that we're talking about, uh, Jesus decided that, you know, here we are, we got this bread and we got this, these fish, which is a little boy's lunch. And in this situation, one person can eat, or it's one person's lunch. But if you take it and give it to him, if you take and give it to him, and now instead of one person eating, a whole lot of people are eating. 
And they're not just eating just a little bit. They eating all they want to eat. They're eating until satisfied, until until satisfaction, until fullness. And if you would just go with me to the book of John right now, and I want to read that to you, just to show you I'm not making stuff up. John chapter six, if we will please stand, and we're gonna start at verse five. John six starting at verse five. And I said already how he had gone across the Sea of Galilee. We're going to start at verse 5, though. And it says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said to Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make them, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would, in other words, as much as they wanted. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, and nothing to be lost. And therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remain over and above unto them that it eaten. May Lord a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that died on that old rugged cross. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, this is the same Jesus we read about right now in your word that performed this miracle where he took the bread and he took the fish and he divided amongst over 5,000 people and they all fed unto fullness and they still had a whole lot left over, Lord, for takeout plates. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, as we come to this part of the service, the tithe and the offering. Lord, what we are asked to give and according to the purpose in our heart, Lord, so Lord, that, that your work can be done in the church, in the ministry. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for each and every person that give, Lord, that had to give and every person that wants to give, Lord, that have not. Not for the amount, Lord, that is given, but, Lord, for the condition of their heart. And, Lord, we pray that Lord, everything that is given to this church, Mount Common Ministries, Lord, that will be good stewards. Lord, we love you, and, Lord, we thank you. We say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you bring your tithes and offering from the real church around the walls, please? Thank you. And my sister.